again. I don't know what happened, I just tried to stream this a little while ago and it didn't work, so I'm not sure if this is working. I'm gonna go into my other account and have a look now. Right, this is live. Let's have a look. So yeah, yesterday I was doing a live stream and but I forgot that I got up at four o'clock in the morning and I've been up since four and it was six o'clock in the evening and I hit a wall and my brain stopped working so I had to stop. So now it's the next morning and I'm gonna finish taking the motor out now. Um, right, it appears to be working now. So I'll give myself some little love arts and some smiley faces and stuff. And a like. <laughs> And I've got my tablet here, I'm in another account so I can actually see if anyone's talking to me and I can hopefully reply. So now I'm going to put the stand on it, get the jack underneath it and start letting the motor down. It's still got things connected but once the motor's moving you can see a lot easier where all that stuff is. Right, there wasn't many people watching last night but people have been going back and actually watching the stream, so that's why I'm gonna carry on doing them and I'm gonna carry on talking as if there is somebody there, because there isn't at the moment. But that might change soon. Right, let's get this motor stand on. Bring you back here. So you see a bit better, there you go. My floor's in real poor shape. Um, but it wasn't painted very well, it's just a quick job, oh, probably a year and a half ago now. So I really need to strip this off and do it nice with some proper paint. Where is this thing? It's over here. That's weird. It's not a good place, is it? Put that back on again. Actually, I'll leave that off because I'll probably damage that. Right, someone else watching. Hi. Just getting my motor stand on at the moment. This actually fits into the jack. Got a little knobble on there which fits in the jack, stops it sliding around. It doesn't really keep it upright very well, but it does help.
start taking a bit more stuff off. Get you over there. come off. All this area here and this here is a nightmare on the bobber because everything's sort of crammed in together so that you can't just to hide it so you can't see it so it looks like a bobber. Well it is a bobber. Get him right out of the way so we're not going to short anything. Put it down here on the concrete. Just the engines stand. Oh, we need to get the rectifier off the bottom. Then wires. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to put it back together. I've, <laughs> I've had it apart before. I've been through all this before. There's, there is videos about it, which is why I'm doing this live this time. I prefer putting stuff back together because I go slower and take my time a little bit more and you can clean stuff as you go and things like that. Yeah. 
be interesting to see if this has still got oil leaking into this. That's a little bit damp in there, but there's no nothing dripping out, so I'm pretty sure my oil leak got fixed. Put them bolts back in. So I don't lose them. That's the common oil leak. The, the oil gets forced along the wire for this rectifier and then comes out for the terminals and leaks out of there. And pretty sure I fixed it. everywhere. Didn't really want to do that. Don't like coolant or oil. Brake fluid. Especially when it's cold. Okay, that's that. Be a problem, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm just taking a couple of wires off around this side at the moment. It's not really interesting, so I'll leave the camera over there. I might bring it over actually. It's probably quite useful stuff to see. Come over here. You actually didn't even come up with the tripod. So yeah, it's just these wires here. That one there is for the crankshaft sensor. I need a pick.
I also need my better glasses. I can't really see what I'm doing. That's that. Don't remember doing this bit before. The um, oh no, the starter motor wire. That's all right. That's easy enough. Get him off of there. Let's get that out for now. I just took that oil cap off so that I got more chance of dropping nuts and washes into the engine. And I have dropped that nut. It didn't go in the engine though. There it is. Yeah, so this bit here, there's, it looks like a mess, but I don't think there's anything attached to the engine there. Just got one bolt down there, another bolt down there, they go right through the frame and the engine. And another couple of little bolts either side here. I've already taken the side frames down. So they can go in there for now. I could actually take this stator right off actually to anything. There you go. Right, let's get it back this back over here. I'll start undoing some motor bolts, I reckon. There's stuff here what needs to be undone as well, but it's such a mess up here. Once I've dropped the motor down a bit, I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm not the world's most organised person, so I'm trying to keep stuff tidy as I go, but I'm really not very good at that sort of thing. Take the nut off that, but I'll leave the bolt in there. I'll just 
the same the other side. Actually, take that bolt right out. Right. Let's get through these long bolts. And these ones are odd sizes. Sixteen. Let's get a ratchet in there. That's interesting. Right, these long bolts through the engine have got spacers, so you need to remember where they go. Because they're all different sizes, I think. Where's the other bolt? Down there. Let's try and get that. Something fell out. Like a washer. That's all right. I think there is. Should be a spacer in there too. Yep, there is. That's the top bolt. That's the bottom bolt.
Right, there's nothing holding this motor in now. So this is the interesting bit where things start to go to crap. Oh no, it's loose. Still got the top radiator hose on. It's undone, but. I might just drop it down a little bit first. Injectors, the injector wires off. The temp sensor wire. There's a heap of vacuum hoses up here as well. Where's my glasses? Uh, where's my map sensor wire? I don't want to break that. Let's get this other injector wire off. something around here if I remember rightly. Like a stupid... Oh, that is... It tells you in the manual that you need to take the swing arm off to do this, but you don't.
one spacer there. There's no spacer on the top there. And there's spacer on the other side. I'm just going to slide on the bolt so I know where they go. brake lines and stuff around the back here which sort of you've got to be careful of So right, next stage is to get the head off and see what's going on with the piston, which I reckon this number two piston's broken. So you can't do any of this in the bike because all this is in the way. do this here because I'm on my own at the moment and I can't lift the motor on the bench I don't have a crane or anything like that so I'm just going to secure this here with some blocks of wood and then it's going to do all the work here I reckon blocks of wood that's what we want get to the crankshaft this side and turn the engine over that's no worries Bring you guys, or you guy, however, <laughs> however many people are watching, to there. And we're now going to take the head off of it. Might take my fuel rail off first so that doesn't get damaged. Right, they're actually 500cc injectors, the standard ones are 460cc, I think these are out of a Hayabusa, um, but you just have to put these little sleeves in there to make them fit properly, and they just butt up to the aluminium, you don't have to seal them with anything, they seem okay, they don't leak. Right, 
I need a box for that. Nice if I had one. Look at that. I haven't had this engine apart. This I got from Salvage, which came out of a street twin. I think it had done about 30,000 k's when I got it. These rubber gaskets stick on quite well. I don't leak, not like the old stuff, it's good. Oh, sounds better. So now, I don't really have to time it up because I'm taking the, the pistons out, but where's the camera? Let's, see, let's get this down a bit lower, shall we? There you go. There's actually a flat in the camshaft here, which you line up with the top there. Oh, it's different to my bobber motor, actually. Bobber motor's got two slots in. This has only got one. Is it heavy? Yes, it's very heavy actually. Um, I can't lift it up onto the bench on my own. That's why I'm doing this down here. Yeah, this motor is a little different from the um, bobber motor. Not much. I don't actually have a crank bolt in it to turn it over with. That's where I'm sort of struggling right now. Because it's in the supercharger. It's actually stuck on there. Might move this out a bit so I've got a little bit more room. Come with me over here. See, this is what it's like doing all this without the proper tools. But you don't need to buy expensive tools for everything. I'm gonna 
actually turn it over by hand, sort of. I'm trying to get it roughly. It's actually 180 degrees out at the moment, but the timing mark is sort of where they should be roughly. I said earlier there's only one slot in the head. That's because I'm looking at the wrong end. It's this end. There's two slots in this end. But it is 180 degrees out at the moment, but that doesn't matter because it's coming apart. So what I'm going to do is the tensioner goes in the block this way. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take the rockers off, take the camshaft out, take the head off. Just take the rockers off first. This eight mil, eight mil socket and ratchet is coming so handy for this bike. I love the way the modern Triumphs, all the nuts and bolts are very similar sizes, so you're not hunting around for tools the whole time. So I'm just undoing these evenly because a couple of them will be under spring tension from the valve springs is these ones here, you can feel it. If you don't do this right, you can damage stuff. And they are actually marked. There's a number two on there, because that's number two cylinder, and there's arrows pointing towards the front. So you can't really get these on wrong i don't think they fit on in the wrong place anyway and the camshaft it's a similar story with that i don't think anything actually goes back in the wrong place apart from the little lash caps on top of the valves they're all separate I quite enjoy doing this now, I don't have to do it for a living. Right, I'm gonna get a drink.
the rockers are probably going on in a different place actually. They'll, in, they'll be interchangeable, but the, the mounts for them aren't. So I'll try and keep them on the mount like that. They do come off. Something just dropped out of there. Oh no, the dowel, the dowel just fell out and it went right in the engine. I'm going to write that down so I remember to get that. So I don't know how easy that's going to be to find, but these are things that happen. One, two, right, then both them dowels are there. Right, these little lash caps. I always get them back in the same place. <laughs> I'm a bit worried about finding that little dowel because that has probably made its way all the way to the bottom and I don't, not sure what sort of a job it is to get the sump off. And it does, it looks like it just unbolts. So I don't think I've got a split cases or anything like that. So now the tensioner I've got to unscrew, which goes through the front. Let's come around here. Let me see that. What size is that? Oh. Twenty four mil. So that's your hydraulic tensioner. It just pushes against that guide there and then pushes against the chain.
So now the cam. Should be able to come out. Should be able to slip that chain off. What way out does it go? I think it only comes out one way. But you can't, I don't think you can put this in wrong. It won't fit the wrong way around. Plus you've got your timing mark at that end. And if you're filming it, that really helps as well. If you're not taking the cylinder head off, you need to put something through the chain to actually stop it from dropping into the engine. But we're taking the head off and we're taking the pistons out. So that could go, that can fall in there for now. Point this out too. This camshaft's got a centrifugal weight on it there, which pushes these little balls out the bottom of the of the camshaft there. I think it's something to do with decompression, or it might stop them rattling at higher sort of RPM or something. I'm not sure, I haven't really looked into it. But I'm pretty sure that's I can hear them rattling on this engine. There's something on the top end here which sort of rattles. It doesn't sound like it's a problem with it, I can just hear it. So now I need to get this guide out. That's water, by the way, it's not actually beer. I don't have a five mil Allen key bit at the moment. Well, actually, I think I found one the other day. I don't know where it is now, though. No, I did, I lost it again. Most people it's 10 mil spanners. With me, it's five mil Allen key bits. And these are all bloody thread locked in, aren't they, as well? So they're tight. I'm going to write that on my list actually, 5mm bit. Because doing this like this, this is a pain in the bum.
I am at work, Adam Blessley. You go to work. <laughs> Mind you, it's not really work anymore. It doesn't feel like work. Right, so that's that guide out of there. Now, we can just undo the cylinder head. I start from the outside and work my way in. The Haynes manual says, it gives you a tightening torque, tightening sequence, and it says in the manual, look at the sequence in the figure to undo it. But it's not, it's a tightening sequence, so I'll just do that in reverse. So I believe these are 14 minutes. Yep. I'll hold the engine at the same time for doing this as well. These are really long bolts. They actually go, they hold the barrels in as well. I don't need power, have any power tools to do this. Yeah, I do do it that way, Adam Blessley. I forgot you're an electrician, you don't do anything all day long. Advertise that, whatever that is. Many people would use a gun to do this, but I don't have a gun. I do, but I don't have a compressor good enough to sort it out. I could really do with some battery powered stuff, but that's not high on my list of priorities yet. Unless someone actually wants to sponsor me with stuff like that, that's fine. 
feel free. I'll do the washer for that. I'll try and keep account of all these washes as well. So that I'm not putting too much stuff out of the motor. <laughs> that one's fell in the jack. I'm not going to be able to retrieve that yet. Where's my magnet? Yeah, I'm not the world's most organised person. I try, but the more organised I try and get, the worse I get. So, it, I work better in my unorganised mess. I know where everything is, I know how it's going. If I try to organise myself, it just confuses me, it makes things worse. I've got to do anything else. I think that's it. It's just going to be a bit tight on dowels, maybe. Oh, I can see a problem already. I know exactly what's wrong. We have a look in there, look. That's your cinder head. There's one dowel. I know both the dowels are in the head. I will put this over here. Right. That's a problem there. Ring land's broken. It's exactly what I thought it was. Not bad running 12 second quarters without getting off the line very well with a broken piston. Okay, so should we take this right out now? Not sure. That is a result of getting it hot on the dyno and then leaning it down instead of reaching it up at one point. And I think that's what hurt that. My own stupid mistake. Yeah, it's a bit damp because that's engine oil. Because it's coming up past that broken piston there. Right, let's take these barrels off actually. Let's go for it. A trusty rubber hammer. Loose. Get some rag and stuff around there. Where's me? 
Ja, nee. There you go, nice Ipswich Volkswagen shirt. That was stuck. Them smashing around a bit. Right, and the barrel, well, it's got a little mark on it, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Not sure about that actually. We'll look at that later. So that's the problem there. That ring lens broke. It's marked the sun, it's marked that there too. Hopefully the barrel is going to be all right because I don't think it's a simple process to um, hone them. Right, okay, I'm going to call it a day there and go and have some breakfast. But I now know. What's wrong with it? So, have a good day.